Hey y'all, doing a new video today. I ordered this uh, Actros car transporter from this reseller off AliExpress, uh, reseller Car Models World Store. They have a few left, so uh, we're going to do an unboxing of this thing today and see if it was shipped properly and if, you know, take a look at the model itself. Okay, so here we go. Uh, looks like a nice virgin box here, so I don't anticipate too many problems. Some dents, you know, from being thrown around, but alright, let's see. Through this. Alright. Okay, so let's take a look. Alright, nice. Now, this is the way you pack stuff, guys. A lot of stuff I buy from eBay and stuff is just so haphazardly packed. But this thing is packed tight, so there's no movement of the contents. this bubble stuff here, or even maybe I don't need to. Alright, so this guy even wants to promote himself with this contact information. You know, I think this web's, this seller is thinking about customer service on the long run. So hopefully, I don't see any problems. There's a little gift here. Seems to be like a laser cut wood phone stand I'm guessing that yeah it's gotta be a cell phone stand a mobile stand all right so gain corpse product GCD very nice box nice uh, kind of like a satin finish I don't know what this 22 means if that's their the sec 20 second model there who knows whatever but I guess that's a good flap to try to open so I'll use my metal ruler try to get in here okay Image of the product back there, and now Gain Corpse has a nice styrofoam package here, and it looks to be taped together. Well, let's see what's going on here. Oh, it even comes with tweezers, so that's pretty cool, and a really a fancy pamphlet of how to assemble the thing. Apparently you gotta glue some parts, all these uh, looks like photo etched rails and stuff. I'm not sure the photo etched, we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so that's not so important. Alright, we'll get to this later. Cut this thing with my short knife here. This is some nice packaging, GCD. Good job. Oh, apparently I opened it upside down. That's okay. Alright, so the Mercedes Actros, this model came out in the mid-90s, and this seems to be the fourth generation of the model from Mercedes, that is. Not, not die-cast model, but the fourth generation Actros. Alright, so we got some foam spacers to keep the things from rattling around in shipment. And then you got these little rubbery bands here to keep it all together. Alright, let's get rid of that. There's one on the cabin. I'm not sure if that means the cabin can open. You gotta be really careful around these plastic parts here. So this is a cab over design, which isn't really popular in North America, but it's really popular in Asia and Europe, mainly because uh, cab overs, you know, they're shorter trucks. They don't have a long nose sticking out, so they're more maneuverable for smaller roads that are common in the the old continent and uh, Asia, whereas America is just giant freeways so they can have longer trucks. All right, yeah, so that rubber band did mean I can uh, open this. So yeah, you got some engine detail and there's even a Mercedes logo on that uh, engine. The radiator fan's like a greenish color. You can kind of see it there. So really interesting. Yeah, what's also interesting is on this side of the truck, they chose to put the fender glued onto the body here so you can see more of the engine. I'm not sure if the real truck does that. And this actually is why cab over trucks aren't so popular in America is because you got to make sure everything is bolted down or fastened down in the cabin before you can open it and work on the engine to service it. Whereas if the engine is totally in front, you don't have to do all that preparation to maintain your, your truck engine. All right, so let's kind of close that up there so 
I, I, I was debating, you know, what color to get. Yellow, this is a solid yellow, so I'm afraid maybe in the future it'll have paint rash if it doesn't even, maybe it has some now. I'm not seeing any yet, which is great. But I was also debating getting a metallic one, so long term it should probably last longer. Oh, that's cool. I just by accident realized that the, the wheels steer, which I'm starting to notice on some other models. Uh, Virtu Toys did a video on a Mercedes Pullman limousine, and that thing has steering front wheels, which I think is really cool. I think it'd be nice to have that on most of these uh, die casts. So there must be some way to get that. There we go. It snapped back in. So that's a nice body seam. It's a really tight fit. This is a little sloppy here. You can see the the sprue, how it was trimmed off this fender, and you can see the roughness of it. Rear tail lights are plastic, and then there's tampoed on silver and orange indicators on top of that plastic. But what's really nice are these photo etched deck deck panels. I don't know what they're really called, but just the surfaces the car would run on. These are photo etched, a really crisp detail, really impressive. I was looking at the Mini GT transporter and that just looks like a Hot Wheels toy compared to this. This thing is very well detailed. The treads on these tires are actually different. Maybe if I focus in here, you can kind of see the rear tire tread is actually different than the front tire tread. So that was totally unnecessary, but well appreciated. And you can see the the drive shaft here. Indication that these are the air air brake cylinders. The suspension is kind of you know it's shown. And then there's that even an Actros logo on that fender there. Hopefully that's focusing in. So hold on here. I'm gonna move. Try to get the camera closer here. Try to get better light for you guys. All right, so I guess we'll kind of get into the trailer a bit now. All right, so I'll get rid of the phone. Got some wax paper surrounding this trailer. And again, you got the nice foam to keep the trailer from collapsing during shipping, which I guess would lead to a lot of scratching. So Lore, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, L-O-H-R, Lore is a French trailer company. They've been around for quite a while, I think like 50 years, making uh, trailers for the transportation industry. And so this is the Multi-Lore or Euro-Lore model. And it's a... Two axles on the trailer. Alright, so it obviously doesn't uh, flip up and down the, these main struts, but that foam was in there, I'm guessing, because this gray one might move. I'm gonna try. No, maybe it doesn't. So if it doesn't move, I'm guessing that shipping foam was just to keep these from breaking. I guess if it suffered enough of a drop, these would actually snap and the thing would just break off. So uh, that's the only reason thing I can find for that foam. So this piece that came out earlier, I guess goes in here. There's two little peg holes there. Let's see. So there's two rectangular peg, ho peg holes here and two round peg holes, you know, there. So the f lower part of this seems to have the corresponding square pegs so that makes me think it goes in like this oh i see so these struts there these shock struts are plastic i guess hmm. They're not really lining up so well. They're quite a bit off, actually. I don't want to force it. At least I got the front the front pegs in there. So 
I think if I force it, maybe this plastic shock thing will snap. So keep that in mind, guys, if you buy this thing. All right, so obviously we want to see the trailer hitch here go on to this. And I'm guessing there's a pin missing because uh, there's a hole in both pieces here. And so there must be a pin in here. Ah, I see. There's literally a screw meant to screw those together. And there's some, uh, well, sorry, let's just take this piece of plastic off. I'm assuming it must be taped together. It doesn't look to be taped together. All right. So, so you can open it with it all flying off anywhere. So it's just a tension, tension fit, the clamshell plastic here. There's no tape. Let's uh, move this back here. So we have another ramp here. And again, we got these square pegs up here and round peg holes here, which I would have to assume then you're gonna have to take these two struts, which seem to be plastic. These two st plastic struts must probably peg into these holes here and then peg in somewhere on the vehicle itself. Where on the trailer though? That's the question. So you'll notice here in the trailer, there's a bunch of round peg holes. So that, I'm assuming, let's put these tweezers to use. It's really nice they have this touch of the tweezers. These are the wheel stops. Am I right? No, it's not the wheel stops because the peg holes on this are wider than the peg holes in the deck. See, much wider, wider. So, no. Interesting. I guess that's why it comes with a manual. I'm just trying to guess where all these things go right now. So the fence here, I don't know if you'd call it a fence, but it's something to keep you from falling off the truck. These do look to be metal, yeah. They're really thick photo etched parts. So that's nice. They're not, they could have easily gone with plastic and molded plastic. And if you look carefully here, you can see grooves here, here, here in the die casting. So these grooves, I guess you're expected to use the glue and glue this in here, right? Like that which I'm not going to do for this video, but uh, I will do later. But obviously if you drop this thing with these things on, these are going to get all sorts of bent and you'll never get them straight again. So definitely be careful handling this if you put these uh, little fences on. Now the question is, what's in this bag? Ah, this is a bag full of the wheel stops, I'm guessing now because they're a lot smaller. Okay, so let's just empty the bag out into this tray. And let you get a better look here. All right, so try to focus, focus, focus. Come on. Sorry. My phone is, I'm actually using a phone on this video here. Well, I can't focus on that, but you can definitely see here the general shape of these little wheel stops here. And so now I'm assuming these things must fit these peg holes, yes. All right, so, of course, it's a really loose fit. So, they're nice and easy to put in. You can see I put those two in but you can also see how loose they are. So if you're gonna put these in, I would recommend you maybe add some silicone glue or white glue. Silicone glue is gonna be a stronger bond, but it'll also be a little, but it doesn't generally leave marks if you try to remove it. Whereas white school glue, it's also gonna be a strong bond, but you'll probably break this piece trying to remove it. 
But with white school glue, you can just soak it in some hot water and the water will penetrate the glue and soften it up. So it's one or the other. For me, I think I'm gonna use clear silicone glue later on to glue a couple of these in there. Okay, so let me move this away so it doesn't end up all over the floor. This one's a mystery. I'll try to figure that out later. But I think uh, you guys probably wanna see some cars on this, right? I know I do. So let's just, uh, and then we'll turn the wheel there. Well, we'll leave it that way. So some 164 scale cars. Here's a, just a beater Ferrari. A Kyosho Skyline. Big American green light. Will it fit in the bottom? Yes. All right, and then a tall Imev. Yeah, it'll definitely fit in there. Okay, so obviously with scale cars, 164 scale cars, not Hot Wheels, most of them will fit. You know, you can see obviously a skinny Japanese car up top here, not an issue, but even a pretty wide American car will fit in the bottom of this thing here. So that's nice. Now the question is, if we do put like a non-scale Hot Wheels, this is an old Suzuki concept, yeah, even that one fits. But now, I'm gonna put a Jada car. This is like, I think a 154 scale. Yeah, 154 scale. And it still will fit at least on the top. Now will it fit on the bottom? No, it's not. The body's, ooh, that's gonna scratch the paint. So 154 scale data, maybe not so great on the bottom, but uh, definitely can fit on the top here. So if you have like 164 scale trucks and stuff, I'm pretty sure they'll fit on this thing, at least on the top, no problem. Seems to be a pretty wide deck. You know, the width of this trailer. Take a look at the width there. You have a lot of uh, space to work with on both sides. Bear in mind, you'll, I'm gonna have those fences there, so you should probably only put the cars in from the top with your fingers that way. Otherwise, you're gonna really bend those little, uh, those photo wet parts there. Uh, let's try another car, a fairly bigger, big car. It's Bentley from uh, Mini GT. So no problem there. Again, even the Bentley, there's a lot of width to work with there. And then just for fun, a uh, little Mini. Mini is Mini. I used to have a Mini Cooper, like a nine, not a Cooper. It was like a 1990s Mini Mayfair, but it was, you know, the small one, not a BMW one. And it was a really comical, fun car to drive. It got attention everywhere. I got pulled over by the police once in, not because I was doing anything bad, but the cop wanted to know how much I would sell the car for. <laughs> so, but uh, every time I drove that thing, it something broke. It also leaked like a, a quart of oil every week. So it wasn't a reliable car at all. It's good that BMW purchased the brand and res resurrected it. But original Austin, original BMCs, original Morris Minis, they were not meant to last a long time but definitely fun. They really did feel like go-karts. Okay, so, all right guys, well, it's been a, quite a while now, so I'm just gonna leave it with this shot here. But in general, I'd say this uh, seller, Car Models World Store off AliExpress, you know, they package their products well, so that's a good thing. And then as far as the actual model by GCD, it's a great model. I'm a I'm really, really impressed, you know, with all the details and the finish, no paint rash, so, and then all these tiny details, so I suggest you guys try to pick one of these up if you want to make some nice, interesting dioramas. All right, I'll see you the next time. Bye.